So now we want to put everything we've learned from Chapter 5 so far into a big example that also overlaps with statistics a bit. And this is a two-way table example. So it's a two-way table because it has two directions. It has columns, which are the vertical sections, and rows, which are the horizontal sections. Right? This is also known as a contingency table. And you can see how it's full of real-life statistics. This is the actual active duty military recruits by military service and race and ethnicity, in case you're interested. Um, so it's, it's where statistics and probability meet. It's one of the many places, is in a table like this. All right, so what is the column variable? Well, the columns are the vertical bits. So that would be the races and ethnicities, because they are the columns. So race, ethnicity. The row variable is the military service, right? I always think of columns are you know, pillars and columns are the same thing. They hold up your porch, right? So they're the vertical ones. So you might want to make a note um, because everybody always forgets. <laughs> so these are the vertical, right? Columns are vertical, rows are horizontal, right? So these ones are up and down. These ones are left and right, just to help you remember the difference between them. I didn't remember for many years <laughs> as a kid, and I've, I've gotten used to it now. All right, so how many active duty military personnel were recruited in 2018? And that's this big number down here. This is the big total. I'm going to actually kind of circle that one because it's really important. So that's the big total, the big sum for the whole thing. All right, so that would be the number, 163582. So there were 163,582 recruits to the military services in 2018. Now, are any of the races and ethnicities unusual among um, active duty recruits? So let's remind ourselves, unusual is less than 5% or 0.05, right? We learned that in chapter uh, three, as a matter of fact. So it was a couple chapters ago. All right, so would any of these values be unusual? Um, well, we can find out, right? Because what you would do is you would take your races and ethnicities and you would divide them by this guy right here, right? So if I take 86553 and divide it by, here, let me, let me grab decimals real quickly. All right, so 86553 and divide it by 163582. I can see that is definitely not unusual. Okay, but then what about... Uh, the Hispanic. So that would be 32670. Nope, that's not unusual either. All right, then what about black? That's 28401. Nope. All right, now what about AIAN, which stands for American Indian Alaskan Native? So that would be 1280. Definitely unusual. All right, so there's one. I can actually just change these ones, so let me shift that one. So that's that one. Now what about Asian? Asian is 6344. That's unusual as well. That's lower than 0 0.05. And NHPI is 867. Right, so that's Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander, and that's very unusual. And then other, let me just grab one more, other would be 7467. Unusual. Right, it's just under 0.05. It's at 0.0456. So are any of the races and ethnicities? Yes, <laughs> very much so. So yes. All right, so it was AIAN, which is American Indian Alaskan Native, Asian, NHPI, which is um, Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander, like people that are from Guam, for example, and other are all unusual. Un Oop, I'm spelling unusual wrong. Unusual. <laughs> I had a little bit of dyslexia there for a second. Unusual. Because um, they all have, or let me put it this way, because they all have 
um, less than 5% probability. There we go. You are going to select a single active duty recruit. Now I notice this bit right here. That's going to be important for us later, so pay attention to that now um, because that helps us. Um, and the reason it helps us, just so you know, is when you have a single active duty recruit, what it means is you're working with rules 1, 2, and 3 generally. 3 is a little weird because 3 can get used later as well, but when you're working with a singleton like that, it's going to be rules 1, 2, and 3. These two, 4 and 5, tend to be for multiples, which we'll learn in the next section. So it's just a way of noting that when you get to a problem for, say, an exam or something like that. When you see single, it means you're going to be using rules 1, 2, and 3. I'm going to make a note. Probability rules 1, 2, and 3 are on the table. And you don't have to note them, right? It's not that you're not generally asked, you know, which probability rule are you using? But it's more for your own benefits. You'll know what the heck you're doing. All right, so they want to know what's the probability of being recruited to the Air Force. Okay, well, Air Force would be... 30001 over 163582 and you'll notice you have no way of knowing you know what the heck that is but it does say right here give four decimal places so we will so we are going to make decimals find this all right and i already have this denominator set up so i'm just going to stick with it <laughs> and 30001 makes 1834 so 0.1834 It's got an approximation sign because, of course, we're rounding there. And you're done. Now, what about the probability they were black? Well, we already found that, but it was um, 2, 8. We found it briefly, but then we made it go away. So 2, 8, 4, 0, 1 divided by 1, 6, 3, 5, 8, 2. All right, let me go grab decimals again. I'll just do it right here. 28401 makes 0 0.1736. So I wrote that down. Let's actually keep going into the next page. And I'll start off the next page and then we'll finish it in the next video. Because this is going to take us a while. There's so many of them here. All right. So next. Um, well, I will say, notice everything so far was section 5.1. I mean, this is just basic stuff where you're just finding the, you know, I haven't even used probability rules 1, 2, or 3. Haven't used them because these are just basic. Mm -hmm. But over here, now I'm going to start using them. <laughs> so again, I'm going to make a note. And it's not because you didn't write the note on the previous page. It's that you never know what page of the notes you're going to refer back to when you go to study this for the exam. So you write it on both pages so that way you know for your own benefit. And you'll also note that again we want four decimal places right there. Now looking at this problem right now I can see a red glaring ore right in the middle of it. I see one on the next one too. Hmm. Okay so ore. So I have to think to myself which rule am I going to use? Are Army and Navy disjoint? Because if they're disjoint, I can just add them up and use rule number one. But if they're not disjoint, then I'll have to subtract the overlap. Ah, but Army and Navy are disjoint, so I'll make a little note right here. Army and Navy are disjoint. You cannot sign up for both at the same time. Again, this question wasn't asked, but write it down because it will be on, say, a worksheet or something like that. So since they're disjoint, that means that we can use rule number one. We can just add the probability of Army plus the probability of Navy. Simple as that. So I'm going to make a note. Again, not because 
you need to, but for your own studying purposes. You write down what rule you're using so that way you know. So the Army or Navy is the probability of Army plus the probability plus the probability of Navy, which is, okay, Army was 63519 out of 163582. Uh, and we're going to add to it the Navy, which was 38752 over 163582. Now remember from grade school somewhere, when you add fractions with the same denominator, you actually just leave the denominator alone. So it's going to be um, this number plus this number over that denominator. And you don't have to do this step. This is just if you wanted the fraction, this is how you would do it. So, and again, you're writing more notes than you nece necessarily need just for your own benefit. So you want to take 63519 plus 38752, and it gets you 102271. And if I divide that by 163582, I get 0 0.6252, which, by the way, I could have just made... 163582. I arrow over to get out of the fraction and then 38752 divided by 163582. It works that way too. Same answer. I can just type it like it looks. I was just showing the fraction just in case you were interested. 0 0.6252. So this is the actual answer that's being asked for. The rest of it's just kind of details <laughs> to get there. All right, so next. Black and Hispanic. Well, the way we have this table is that Black and Hispanic are disjoint also. So that's good because if they're disjoint, it means you can just add them up. So you're using rule number one again. The probability of Black or Hispanic Hispanic is the probability of black plus the probability of Hispanic, which is, okay, so black was 28401 plus, and then it'd be 32670 over 163582. And again, it didn't ask for the fraction. It's just in case you're interested. Um, you just add, leave the denominator alone and add the two numerators together. So we would take, let's see here, 28401 plus 32670. And that gets us 61071. And again, you don't have to do that. You can do here. Actually, let me do this. 28401 plus 32670, and you get that. 3733, which is what 61071 divided by 163582 would be. It's 0 0.3733. Again, it's not that the fraction was asked for. You're writing more notes than you need, so that way you can answer any question that can get thrown your way. but that's the actual answer is the 3733.